again, fellow RC enthusiasts. It's your host, Tom Cogswell, here from Horizon Hobby and Spectrum RC, here to give you a night edition of the Quick Hit Tech Tip video series. And in this video, we're going to be going over how to set up lights, or in this case, a light bar, on a switch on your Surface Radio. Isn't that snazzy? So before we really get started on programming the radio to do this, I want to go over what you need to do this sort of thing, where you can have a light on a switch. Some people think that, oh, I can just plug in the uh, the light bar, like the light bar, that's, and the light bars, the plug on the end, are just simply a uh, servo plug with a power and a ground. That's all it is. There's no signal going to it. And likewise, with no signal going to it, that means that there's no way to tell the light switch to turn on and off. So to be able to do turn off and on any kind of light, you're gonna need some sort of light controller. And what a light controller is gonna do is it's going to take the signal and it's gonna act like an on off switch for the power going to your lights. There's a couple of options that I personally like to use. The E-Flight EFLA 600. It's kind of a universal one. Yeah, it's an E-Flight part. It can be used for a multitude of things. That's why I call it a universal light kit. What and we recommend about 5.5 volts is the input voltage. Uh, so a regular ESCs, BEC should be fine. But double check, uh, just in case. But another option that I like to, to use myself, and it's another airplane part, uh, is the Evolution EVOA 100. Now what this is actually normally used for is it goes between a uh, ignition system so that you can power the ignition system and then plug it into your receiver and turn the ignition system off on a gas engine. But the reason I like this guy is because it can handle, I believe, up to about 3 amps of current going through it and it can uh, handle up to 20 volts. So if you have an LED bar like this one that can handle 12 volts and you want it to be brighter, you want to be able to feed it with more voltage than what's on your servo rail. Likewise, I'll show you here how I have it wired up. So keep that in mind that you're going to be doing a bit of DIY when you're setting up your light system. I have soldered these cables here, changed the connectors, I've actually wired in my EVOA 100 into my battery lead. So just kind of keep that in mind. If you guys want to do this kind of stuff, you'll probably need a soldering iron and a little bit of confidence in your soldering abilities. So let's go over how I set this up. It's actually really simple, and uh, you can do it with pretty much any Spectrum radio, even the DX3 smart transmitter. Without the screen on it, you can set it up so it has that little rocker switch on the side where you can do something like this. You just need an auxiliary channel that can be turned off and on, or go up and down, or something along those lines. First thing you're gonna go to, and this is on a DX5 rugged, but like I said, it'll work pretty much at any Spectrum radio. The What I go through here steps are gonna be the same for DX5 Pro, DX5 rugged, DX5C, all those good guys. You just need an extra channel on your receiver. And luckily I'm using the Firma 40, which comes with a four channel receiver built into it. Perfect crawler ESC. And it's great for stuff like this because it has two extra channels for winches and lights and whatever you need. So. We're gonna go to the menu here. And the first thing I always check when uh, I'm setting up something like this is I will go to the AVC menu, if you, especially if you're starting with a, a model that you previously programmed or something like that, it's not a blank model. I'll just go to the AVC menu and make sure it's inhibited because AVC is gonna use channels AUX1 and AUX2 for its gains and priorities and things like that. So just make sure that's inhibited. Essentially what I'm telling you here is to make sure there's no, the channel that you're wanting to use is not being used by something else. And then on top of that, kind of along the same vein, is I, I wanna make sure the switch I wanna use is not used by something else. So I'll go to the trim menu and make sure like one of my trims are set up on, on there. I got my steering trim on B and my throttle trim on A. That's by default. I wanna use the C switch, this guy right here. Um, actually, honestly, I like to use these switches on the sides for lights, but just for demonstration's sake. And then once you've determined that you don't have a, uh, you have a channel that's open that you want to use is open, and that the switch that you want to use is also open, we'll go down to where we set it up. We'll go ahead and go there, and we're going to go down to AUGS Assign, which is this guy here, it's AUX Assign, or Auxiliary Assign. And AUGS1 is the channel that I'm using, that's the third channel. You could choose AUX2 or AUX3, depending on how many channels your receiver has. Doesn't matter. And we'll go to input. 
click on OK or tap on OK. And like I was saying, I want to use the C switch, so I'm going to click that. Cool. You just you just highlight it and you put the little box around there and you hit the button. If you hit the switch of your choice, it'll just assign it for you. And then, well, we're pretty much all the way there, but then the next thing down is the mode. You have the options of two position, three position, and linear. For this kind of application, I'm gonna use the two position switch. What that does is it makes it turn on when you push it forward and off when you push it backwards. And we're gonna turn momentary to inactive or inhibit and then cyclic we're going to leave on inhibit so now when i hit the c trimmer my light goes on and off now you might be curious what cyclic's doing uh i'll just show you cyclic you turn that on and essentially what that does is if you hit the switch either direction it's going to turn it off and then on so one on once i'm pushing it forward it just turns it off up to you, it's a preference thing, but it works pretty well. Okay, and that is how you set up lights on your rig with your DX5 radio, DX5C, DX5 rugged, and DX5 Pro. If you guys have any other questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comments below. This is Tom signing off, happy crawling.